Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs. Hello, my name is Sandro Grassa and I'm a licensed acupuncturist. Welcome to a very, very challenging video blog post. Um, we will probably have to break this down into a few of them, um, but that will be cool because it will allow you to ask questions as we move along uh, talking about this topic. If you remember correctly from last week's video, we had a question from a patient in the clinic who wanted us to try and do something uh, where we could discuss PCOS acupuncture treatment for PCOS, especially for women who are trying to get pregnant. So I also mentioned at the time that last year for my first year of the master's degree, I did uh, one of the assignments was a scoping review and it was focused on acupuncture for PCOS. So I printed a few of the pages. So what I'm going to try to do today is give you a little bit of an introduction um, I also have some recommended reading. There is always recommended reading. But that will be with advice for you as a patient if you're watching this uh, and wanting to know more about what you can do. And as we move on, I'll give you a little bit of the introduction. You can then send questions, you can ask you know, about specifics of your own condition, and we can move on then in terms of how to explore the theme further. So the, the question for the scoping review that I worked on last year was what is the evidence for the efficacy of acupuncture treatment for oligo or amenorrhea in women of reproductive age with polycystic ovary syndrome? So let's break that down a little bit. Evidence for the efficacy of acupuncture, so this is going to be trials, it, some of them were randomized controlled trials, some of them were just trials in comparison with different, so some of them would be taking medication, some of them were getting acupuncture, so there's loads of different um, different trials that, that have been published there throughout the years. And for oligo or amenorrhea, so oligomenorrhea is um, irregular menstrual cycles and amenorrhea is no menstrual cycles in women of reproductive age with polycystic ovary syndrome. So I focus on women of reproductive age because, as you know by now, my main field of research and my main passion and my speciality in the clinic is acupuncture for fertility. So I wanted to focus on that particular uh, age group of women that are in, in trying to get pregnant. So, the, to give you a little bit of a background, as I said, we'll do a bit of the introduction today. Um, polycystic ovary syndrome, normally known as PCOS, um, is an endocrine metabolic disorder that affects one in five women in the UK. These are figures from the NHS from 2015. I suspect that the numbers for Ireland are not going to be that different um, because it's pretty much common uh, condition seen both, both here and in the UK. Don't know about figures for other countries if you're watching this but that wouldn't be that difficult to, uh, to do a quick search and see what the numbers are but one in five women in the UK and those are figures from uh, 2015 endocrine metabolic disorder so you can see there already that uh, it involves the endocrine system and uh, but also the, the metabolic system this is one of the reasons why sometimes it can be confusing for women that they, their GP might be referring them to the endocrinologist or to the gynecologist or they might be needed to be seen by both um, and, and that's because of the complexity of the, of the condition itself but we'll explore that further um, a little bit more. The main clinical manifestations or the symptoms of what is shown in, in women um, of reproductive age include oligomenorrhea, as I said the irregular cycles um, Hirsutism, so that's the uh, excess body hair, some more more pronounced in the face, but actually excess body hair as well. Obesity and difficulty getting pregnant. Um, the, the, the study that I got that from was actually from 2015 as well, and that was where PCOS accounts for 80% of anovulatory infertility. So that is infertility that is caused by there is no ovulation at all. So um, that's eighty PCOS accounts for eighty percent of uh, of those cases, which is which is, you can see a lot. Um, also prevalent in women with PCOS are hyperandrogenism. That's between sixty to eighty percent of the cases. So hyperandrogenism is the excess of um, male hormones in women, and that's part of the reason why then uh, we were talking before about the excess body hair. So there's a, a um, there's one of the causes for it, but not just that. Um, so 
hyperandrogenism, that's 60 to 80 percent of the cases, and insulin resistance, that's the, found in 50 to 80 percent of the cases, along with multifollicular and or enlarged ovary or ovaries. Another very important case there is that it's not just that it's one ovary or does it have to be both, it doesn't matter. It, it can happen on one side, it can happen on both sides. Um, so the uh, um, other, other accompanying symptoms of PCOS include acne, oily skin, thinning head hair, uh, mood swings, which are Again, those those symptoms that are going alongside with the main case, so you might have someone in the clinic saying that I've been trying to get pregnant, it's not working, and you start seeing some of those symptoms and you put two and two together and you start to suspect that it could be something on the background, you need to refer for uh, for further investigation. Um, just, just talking about that briefly, that's how I know I keep going on about this, but how important it is that you visit a, 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 the acupuncturist if that's your first port of call, that has that qualification not just on the acupuncture and Chinese medicine side of things but also knows about fertility and endocrinology so on one hand you're looking for an acupuncturist who is registered so go on the register make sure that the acupuncturist is qualified licensed the um, the acupuncture foundation professional association has a very very cool new website so you can check it out on afpa.ie and um, so first of all you need to kind of make sure that your, your, your acupuncturist that you're going to is someone who is qualified, registered, and then what you do is check if that acupuncturist actually has done further training in gynecology and the chronology in terms of specifics for fertility, so check the acupuncture fertility network. And when you then cross those two together, you have your acupuncturist that will know how to talk to you about this refer further on if it needs be it for it being for the GP to do further bloods or actually to a gynecologist or endocrinologist like what we do in in our clinics here in Ireland um, so always very very important to stress that out make sure that you go to someone who is registered and qualified because you don't want to waste time um, before getting things checked and confirmed because if needs be medication and acupuncture you can still do it at the same time and it's perfect because the, the, the condition is complex enough sometimes combined approaches are much much better as we will talk about now uh, next so the uh, um, in terms of the treatment the treatment itself how does acupuncture work uh, uh, and what points are used. I know sometimes people want to know that, but that's a little bit like asking a, a brain surgeon to come on for a few minutes and say exactly where do they cut, how deep do they cut, how where did they get there. What I'm going to focus on is the broad aspects of it, and then if you have any specific questions, you can send them to us. So one one thing, first of all, in terms of research, uh, particularly here for Europe, with the uh, in terms of acupuncture uh, uh, and uh, PCOS and not just the treatment but actually the management of, of polycystic ovary syndrome I have to say a big big thank you and a great shout out to uh, someone who helped me during the, uh, the scoping review and she has done tremendous amount of work uh, when it comes to developing acupuncture for the treatment and management of PCOS and that's Dr. Elizabeth Stenner Victorin um, amazing body of, of knowledge and experience and has put so many studies and work out there for everyone to actually understand from from our field and from biomedicine as well to see how does actually acupuncture work what do the points do that do then help with the with the condition itself so on, on a more that would be more for a practitioner side of things on the patient side of things big huge shout out to you want to get advice I'll tell you what you need to do. Get yourself online and buy this book. Dr. Fiona McCullough has a book called, sorry, it's a long title, so I have it written here, Eight Steps to Reverse Your PCOS. A, a, a proven program to reset your hormones, repair your metabolism, and restore your fertility. Now, you know what's really, really cool about this? Um, well, one thing is actually that uh, we might be able to have Fiona um, online talking to us soon. So um, subscribe because you'll be the first one to know. And uh, I hope that that we can find some time together that we can do that because it'll be really. I would really, really love you all to see um, Fiona and just talk a little bit about about her book because listen to the title. That's actually pretty much 
How does acupuncture work? What do we do in our clinics that helps with PCOS? Reset your hormones, repair your metabolism, and restore your fertility. Mainly, reset your hormones, repair your metabolism. So, that's what we would be trying to do with our knowledge, with the acupuncture points. Um, ideally, you would be looking at things like, like, for example, just reading from here again, conventional management of PCOS symptoms include weight loss, um, healthy eating, exercise, metformin, that's medication to, low, to lower your insulin, um, letrozole, sometimes known as Fumara as well, or clomiphene citrate, um, that's known as Clomid. Uh, to stimulate ovulation. So again, we go back to the same thing. You just need to reset the hormones, do something that will get them working again. So that would be the way that we would use the acupuncture um, in our clinics, alongside dietary advice. And if we need anything in more detail, as I said to you before, we have a network that we go, okay, you need a dietitian, nutritionist, you know, whatever it is that that needs be. And a lot of the times referred further on to gynecologist or endocrinologist. But the, um, the main thing is that it's not a big issue to have combined treatments to, to look after such complex symptoms like the ones that come with PCOS. And that's okay. You can do acupuncture alongside your medication. It's very, very important that everyone knows what everybody else is doing. So your gynecologist knows that you're going for acupuncture. Your, your, your acupuncturist knows that you're getting your bloods checked and that you're going from your GP to... Everyone needs to be included in this. Integrative medicine, everyone looking after the patient. All you have to do is just keep on following the orders and get better. Um, okay, so that was just a very, very quick overview, kind of like giving you an idea of what it is and, and, and what are the symptoms around. Bearing in mind, j just to give you, I have a note there as well, just to remind you that Sometimes if it's combined treatment and you're taking the medication um, that will be looking after trying to get you to that reset of the hormones and trying to get you to ovulate and then move the hormone cycle from there on, it's fine. What we can do is we can look after the other symptoms that are there. And if you remember when I was saying um, about some of the symptoms, your acne, um, your oily skin, um, the thinning of the hair, the mood swings, we can be looking after those because the medication is looking after something else. It's fine. Integrative care is absolutely fine. It's well manageable between practitioners and we know what we're doing. Um, so that was a, a light overview of it all. Um, I'll leave links to, uh, um, to Fiona's book so that you can get your hands on it. Really, really good information there. And I'll leave notes on uh, where I got some of the information from the studies as well, so that I'm, you know that I'm not just coming up with these uh, with these figures from my head either. And I'll wait for you guys to send me any further questions as I prepare to go a little bit more into uh, in, de in detail into the uh, the ins and outs of how it works in terms of treatment. So. As I said, subscribe because we're trying to get a few things prepared for you and most of them will be kind of like spur of the moment. And um, until next time, be kind and be healthy. Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs.